interested in everything related to that what we do as humans. We are forecasters, you could say. My name is Ben van Berkel, I'm an architect. I am the founder of Hume Studio. I live in Amsterdam, uh, but I have not only an office in Amsterdam, but also in Shanghai and uh, Hong Kong, and also in Frankfurt. I'm born in Utrecht, uh, a city uh, I still love. We lived in an area where a lot of building activities were going on, and I loved the smell of building. My early architectural objects were made out of uh, fascia technique that was very popular in the 70s and the 80s. I had this dream to become an architect. And I thought I could do it through the practice to become an architect. During the day I had the best experience ever. I worked for a Japanese designer who promoted me to go to Japan when I was 19. He learned me everything about Japanese architecture and then many others uh, where I worked for during the, the years that I was at this uh, Rietveld Art College. You can imagine if you work during the day and then do a study in the night, you had not so much time to sleep because um, in the evenings I did all my homework. But because of that intense period of working and then studying and doing my own work, I got so much information in the four years that I was uh, here in Amsterdam that from art to design, graphic design, colors and proportions and printing techniques and, and later on about how furniture were made etc. So that was a very important phase before I studied in the end architecture at, at the uh, Architectural Association in London. I've been thought by Zaha Hadid you know, that was my teacher. I've always liked that she was uh, quite bold in her approach towards architecture. She was not afraid, uh, when I was a student also, to make drawings bigger than any drawing I ever made in my life. So they were sometimes uh, three by two meters. And then another stage was, of course, the period when I set up my own office because that was a very difficult learning stage of how to run a company. And that took me a long time, you know, maybe at least 10 years to make it as smooth as possible to run a very clean, clear, well-organized company. We started in the end of the 80s with Van Berkel in Bos, and then in the end of the 90s we turned it into uh, UN Studio. UN Studio stands for being a united network because we believed in a much more network-based organization. And then uh, over the years we turned into a quite international company uh, with uh, practices in Shanghai and Hong Kong. We have a, a, quite an experimental way of working and that is maybe my secret that I don't use only the computer. We make models, we do make sketches, we make uh, collages. Everything is teamwork here. It's quite shocking how many projects we did over the last years. Uh, Möbius House, the Arnhem train station, a mixed-use project in uh, Hangzhou, a residential project in London, uh, museums. We have uh, fascinations to work uh, for clients who ask us to, to design furniture for the buildings. The work is extremely diverse and, and that's what we like. We have a style somewhere but it is something you always have to discover. Sometimes it was more colorful, then it was more articulated, then it became a bit more sober, then it was me. I had even a blue period, you know? <laughs> I don't have a particular uh, favorite project. I, I, I always say that my favorite project is the next project where I'm working on. The project in Dubai, the Wassel Tower, is a uh, project of uh, 300 meters high. It's highly sustainable with a uh, facade what uh, is a ceramic uh, facade. I think it's the first ceramic tower with this height with ceramic tiles on it. It's a mixed-use project, so hotels, uh, offices and some residential functions to be connected towards the hotel.
The latest project in London is the Canaletto Tower. It is a project of uh, yeah, residential spaces in there with uh, amenities connected towards the tower. The idea there was to, to think about the way how people who live there would meet each other quite regularly uh, so that they could create a set of communities in the sky and uh, that really worked very well. The first project I did in Germany was a very small project. I uh, renovated the IADIS gallery uh, from uh, Christine Feierreis in uh, Berlin. Uh, but it was a very small project. And then of course the major project uh, after that was uh, the Mercedes-Benz Museum. In the client's eye in the beginning, there was this idea that it needed to be a showroom. So, a fantastic showroom where people could learn more about Mercedes. But then, working with uh, the exhibition designer also, we uh, designed a museum. And maybe the, the beauty of the project was that we never expected that it would become so successful. We did a project in uh, Hangzhou, uh, the Raffle City uh, uh, project. Uh, this 220,000 square meters of highly mixed programs. And it's connected to two metro stations and this is a uh, project what is really dealing with the diversity of the city, like we have in the Ford project in uh, Frankfurt. In Frankfurt I was a professor for almost 15 years at the Stadelschule. I have family here in uh, Frankfurt. I always wanted to do a project here. And particularly with the Ford project, what is so exciting is that, that it is on a location, people could use it again. This part of the city center where the Deutsche Bank used to be, uh, that was an area where for almost 40 years not people could come to. There were a lot of people who never knew that part of the city even, because you could not enter it and will make that area also much more lively so that you would have cafes, restaurants, you have two hotels. We have then a uh, roof garden uh, open for to the public and then you have the four towers with uh, different uh, programs in there uh, like housing. It's going to be a project what is going to be so exciting and new in the city centre that it's going to be uh, not only interesting to experience but particularly you're going to love to come back to because it's going to be an, a new extension of the city centre. How you flower out, in a way, almost a project, when you are in the four neighbourhoods connected towards the four towers, because that was the idea, that the four towers also really identify a clear connection towards the four neighbourhoods in the area. The first idea was to, to work with that idea of the, the windmill concept, that you have four areas and that you think about the four areas not as fixed elements, but that they circulate and that they activate themselves by the way how people are going to use them. And then of course we introduced the towers on top of the windmill concept and that made it more dynamic in the way how we approach the site. That sometimes that the, the, the four towers would melt into each other, that they would separate from each other, that you would suddenly see only one tower or two towers. And, and that was the principle in the way how you would experience it from a larger distance when the windmill would activate itself. At the Project 4 we use the kink as a cut in the facade. The reason why we do that is in order to give it a bit more difference in the scale of the project because the, the tower might be looking quite high and quite mono-functional and quite harsh. Uh, but with the kink you can soften the geometry and the sculptural quality of the, the tower. So it's giving it more richness in the way how you experience it from different angles. The reason we wanted to make uh, these lively facades was to make sure that also each facade on each tower would have a different expression. But they were also designed from not only from the outside in, but particularly from the inside out. Well, the most important challenge was to, to make sure that, that everything would work in such a complex project. 
that you would make the project so that if you would have four towers with different programs in there, that you would have for each apartment of each office space a view towards the panorama of uh, um, Frankfurt, for instance. That was very important. So we shifted and twisted the buildings in so many directions endlessly, like sculptures, uh, that they would never face each other. If it comes up to me, then even a little design of, an, of an, a balustrade on a balcony, these details for me are as important as, uh, you know, if we have a green roof or not. The challenge was also to bring all the parties together, that everyone believed in it. That was for me the most important, that not only the client, of course, because it's a very public project, you could say. Everyone's going to look at this. It's a very political project in a way, because it, it needed to house also subsidized housing. It needed to have um, topics of sustainability in there, that it would be attractive for anyone who would come to this part of the city. So you can work there, you can live there, you can, uh, you, you can go to the restaurants and the wellness of the hotel. You have commercial functions, restaurants, so it's, it's almost like a little city in itself. And I think that's also the future of uh, city planning, that, that, that buildings have a little bit more mixed, lively uses in one project, because that means that you can stay longer on the site. You don't have to use constantly the mobility of the city alone. I'm still so fascinated in the profession that I still read everything about the profession. Um, and I, I want to be updated of what all my colleagues are doing. Um, and uh, I think it's also just hard work. Um, yeah, and stay alert. That's maybe my secret, to stay alert. When you are the age where I am, um, you, are, you, you can say that you maybe are um, quite far in your profession because I have already for 30 years this, uh, this office, but strange enough, I have uh, the opposite feeling. I, I have the feeling that I just started um, and that my real time will still, is still to come. <laughs>